Welcome to the 2023 Economic Preparation and Depression Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this brief Saturday night, December 9th, 2023 edition. Ladies and gentlemen, we just experienced a week where the stock market was cruising along. Everything was going good, but the U.S. economy is still not assured of a soft landing, as many experts predict a recession sometime in June to late summer 2024. And this is because we have a slowing job support. We only had 190,000 jobs are added to the economy in the month of November. So even though things are looking good, we're not seeing a lot of seasonal workers in these malls and these FedEx or UPS. We're not seeing a lot of seasonal workers to boost the supply of workers here. And the Labor Department is quite concerned. Um, we're taking a, looking at a cooling off of hiring. Uh, for certain sectors um, of the economy and manufacturing and transportation and utilities. Um, we've seen, although we have seen growth of jobs, according to the report anyway, in government and um, health care and in uh, certain blue collar sectors that are hiring. So we're looking at that now and we're looking at whether or not we're going to see a soft landing. It's possible. But right now, the unemployment rate is still hovering between that 3.4 to 3.7 percent unemployment rate that they've been saying for the last at least seven, eight months now of this year. And so the bottom line is we're looking at the chart and unemployment rate, let's be fair, according to the official statistics, have been going down, trending down. But it's now it's stuck at between, like I said, once again, that 3.5 to 3.7 percent range that they've been playing with. And it's kind of stagnating. And that's not good news as the number of continuing claims continues to rise. Many Americans are still concerned about inflation. Inflation is going to be here to stay throughout this presidential term and through the next presidential term. It will continue to be. And it's very now that there could be what's called stagflation. Now, some people say, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a financial planner, but I will say that people have said, oh, the stock market is going to be going, um, it's not good to invest in stocks or gold or bonds, you know, paper asset, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. That is true to a certain extent. But in a hyperinflation situation, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to see these things continue to inflate. That's the whole definition. If the assets, hard assets are going to rise with that. So that means the prices of houses are going to continue to rise, even though interest rates may come down eventually whenever the Fed, quote unquote, pivots. Um, in a hyperinflation scenario, stocks market goes up to whatever, 50K, 40K. The Dow Jones may go up to 40 or 50K before it's all said and done, before we get into a stagflation situation. So because that's what the definition of it is, you know what I'm saying? So any asset is going to, is viable because it's going to go up, you know, in the time of that. Now, the, now, whether or not you can purchase anything with that increasing value, that's a whole different story. So, according to NBCNews.com, blue-collar hiring and pay gains stay hot in a, quote, cooling job market. So, they officially use cooling job market here on in, in NBC News. It says a high demand for miners, loggers, and construction workers. Uh, most of these contracts in construction have been panned out five or ten years in advance previously. They're just fulfilling those work, those contracts, capital contracts now. So, okay, that's demand for that. But slowing prospects for software and IT professionals here, as you can see. So, this is what we're going to be facing here with this economy a tale of two job markets we have white collar job markets cooling off and blue collar job markets like construction and nursing well not so called nursing but nursing is white collar too but they have stayed strong as you can see here in this chart so this is what we have and we also have the prediction by the World Economic Forum and also The Economist magazine that global economic growth to slow in 2024 as an economic news to read this weekend. So we know that it's going to be slowing globally from London to the Eurozone to Asia to China to the BRICS nations. OK, but slowing does not necessarily mean that there's going to be a recession. Officially, we need two quarters of negative GDP to be in a declared, quote unquote, recession. So the banks say it's going to be slow. We understand that. Um, we know what's going to be the big problems here is going to deal with the housing, credit market, and the big trifecta, the housing market, the credit market, and the, uh, the, the availability of supplies, like supply shortage, the availability of food, water, medicine, clothes to the global market, okay? That's going to be the big problem. Um, if we have a natural disaster, if we have a climate change disaster, if we have something, a geopolitical conflict, and that means that, yes, a recession will be possible in 2024 and 2025, um, and that's going to be the problem because this is what's going to, what's, what's going to cause the great, greatest uh, recession, uh, a 10-year recession of the American economy is that we don't have the jobs to support. We don't have the salaries, the wages to support the type of prices that the things are going to go to, like houses, land, oil, um, cars, 
uh, how, you know, all of that assets are going to be inflating in price, and the wages are not going to be able to keep pace with that. As you can already see now, um, the cost of living adjustments for Social Security, uh, the, the 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 daily wage um, increases or bonuses have been cut out for a lot of hospitals, corporate in institutions in the private sector, government sector. Um, you know, the cost of living raises just does not mean the same as it has been um, 25 years prior to today's date or 30 years prior, where you uh, you know were raised actually out paced the, the cost of inflation so if we get a three percent cost of living raise but inflation's at 5.5 percent or 8.5 percent then it just negatively negates that earning power uh to be able to make any change and we we're just talking about that like you know if you say uh you know people say a hundred thousand dollars a year is the golden standard at least in america supposedly for this type of thing people say if you make over 100 or 150k you should be okay, but it just doesn't go far. It's not the same, especially in high cost of living areas. And but it's not even the same in low cost of living areas. If you live in the Midwest or you know or a small town America, 100k is just not the same as it used to be. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.